Hello! Today we will overview the main menu of the Climate Boss for a natural ventilation house. We will overview every pressable item on the home screen as well as the basics of programming. You'll know this tutorial applies to you if your controller shows RWL 5 step at the top of the home screen, like seen here. Before we begin, I'd like to note that as usual, this information and more is all available in our manual, which is in the description and on our website. The first item of interest on the home screen here is the menu button, located in the top left corner with the three bar icon. Pressing it will bring up the main menu, where options ranging from program all the way down to configuration are. You can return to the main menu with the back arrow in the top left corner. The next item is the name of the controller, located next to the menu button. Next on the top row is the graph button. You can press it to show a graph of the controller's outputs. As a quick overview, you can see that your zone's temperatures are represented by the thick lines, as you can see here, and your vent opening percentages are the thinner lines. You can also see the time of day represented by the color bar at the bottom of the graph. This is a little broken up because the controller was not turned on, but here you can see the purple for night as well as the light blue for the day there in the middle. Guides for the temperature and percent values are on the left of the graph and the right of the graph for percent. And below the graph, you can see lines for each of your outputs. In this case, it's just two heats. These lines will become thicker if the output is turned on, which none of these currently are. The final button on the top row is the Wi-Fi button, and pressing it will bring you to the Wi-Fi settings in the menu. Below the menu button and controller name, you can see the current time of day in the green box here. Remember that this time is in a 24 hour clock. You can also press the time to change it. The blank white space in the middle here is for alarms and errors. In the event of a message appearing here, you can press it to stop the alarm and clear the message, like so. On the other side, you have the day stage which will show either diff, day, or night, depending on your settings and what time of day it is. Tapping this box will bring you to those settings where you can edit the start times of your day stages as well as the target temperatures or set points of your zones for each day stage. Each numbered box here, these nine, can be pressed and edited, like so. At the top of the screen, you can also see a bar that goes from midnight all the way to midnight, and it shows your day stages as colors. For example, I just changed the diff stage, which is this color in the middle there that's only for one bar, from 8 o'clock start, or from 7 o'clock start to an 8 o'clock start. So now it only has that one bar, one hour between that and the next day stage. Going back to the main menu, the next item is our zones. Depending on whether or not you have one or two zones enabled, which you can change in the settings, one or two areas will show up here. In this case, we have both. Each zone displays two pieces of information. You have the SP, or the set point, also known as the target temperature, and then you also have the current actual temperature in the large letters. Take note that the set point is actually what we set up in this screen. We have 75 for zone 1 during the day. It's currently during the day, so there's 75 there. You can tap the set point to initiate a manual override, like so. Say we wanted this to be 70. Doing this will set that set point green, and it will revert back to normal both in color and temperature during the next stage transition, say from day to night. This feature is useful for like if you were working in the greenhouse and wanted a different temperature while you were in there. Below the two zones lay your output indicators. 
all of your vent outputs and heats will show up here with vents as the color blue and on the top labeled A through D and heats as the color red and on the bottom. The indicators have a number of identifying factors, first off being the name, which you can see in the top left corner of each output, which says what it is. VA for vent A, or H1 for heat 1. On the top right corner of each indicator is the output status. Vents will say either off, manual, energy, or auto, while heats can show either off, on, or auto. You can see those there in the corners. So we'll start by covering the vent settings first, and then we'll go to the heats. So if we're on the bottom of the vents, uh, you can see that it shows the current percentage that your vent is open to as a percentage of the vents full open. For example, this one is 50% of full open. To edit the vent settings, tap on the indicator for the one you want to edit. And on this page, you can see five elements. You have the mode, the step size, the open time, the threshold time, and a percentage value for each step. The vent's function is to keep temperature at the target temperature by opening your vents to a percentage specified by you for each step above the target temperature. So, if you have your step value set at 2 degrees, for each 2 degrees above the target temperature the current, that the current temperature is, the controller will open your vent one step. If the target temperature is 65 and the current temperature is 71 degrees, for example, that's three steps above, so your controller will have the vent open to step three, which in this case is 50%. What was just described is what, the, what will happen if the mode is set to auto. There is also off, manual, and energy. If on manual mode, There will be an extra box that allows you to set the percentage. Uh, and then energy mode is used for curtains. And it triggers the curtain to extend during the night stays during the night stage and retract during the diff and day stage. To edit the step value, you can press, and this is not relevant for the energy mode. So go back to auto. And then to enter the step value, you can press the step box and enter your preferred value, go to 3, and that value can be anywhere between 1 and 9. The open time, the next setting here, is important because it helps the controller calculate how long to signal your vent's motor to move to the appropriate percentages. Press this box and enter the time it takes for the vent to fully open. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. We'll say 200 seconds. And then we have the threshold, which is the number of minutes the temperature must be in the next step before the curtain or vent will open or close to the next setting. You can tap this box to enter a value between 1 and 9 minutes. Finally, you can use the table on the right to enter percentage values for each step by pressing the green numbers. Remember that this is a percentage of full open. So we'll change that 50 to 60 as an example, and you'll see it show up there. And that is all for the vents programming. Notice that the settings are different for each vent. On the bottom, for the two heats, you have the output temperature, or in this case it shows manual. Notice that that's also, it also shows manual for the vents if you have that setting enabled. And for heats, the output activates when the current temperature falls under this output temperature. The output temperatures are calculated as the zone's target temperature. In this case, our target temperature is currently 70, but that's because of the override. We'll go back to 75. So our current target temperature is 75. So it takes that target temperature and then minuses the output's offset, which can be inputted in a screen accessible by pressing either of these outputs. On this screen that pops up, you can see a table showing every output's output temperature for each stage of the day. With your settings on the 
side here, diff day night mode and set point plus or minus for the offset. And then you have the outputs on the top, heat one and heat two. Note that you cannot individually edit the output temperatures. They have to be edited by changing the set point plus or minus or the offset button at the bottom. Editing this value, for example, changing this heat one value from three down to two. Noting that this will automatically change to a negative value because this is a heat, you can now see the output temperatures change accordingly. They were, at, at least for day, it was at 72, and now it's only taking two from 75, so it's at 73. Same goes for the diff and night. The values for heat two are different because our zone's target temperature is only 70 there. So 70 minus three is 67. On the screen, you can also press things in the mode row to change the mode of the output. Here, for example, we can turn this so it doesn't turn on at all. You can see both of our outputs are now off. Or we could, for example, put them both back on the auto, or you could just turn it on manually. Returning back to the main screen, we can see a more button in the bottom right. Pressing this will bring us to an alternate menu where we'll see a couple more items of interest. The first thing you'll notice is a humidity value in place of where zone 1 would be. If you have a humidity sensor installed on your board, then you'll see its reading here. On the right, you'll see a blue button labeled outside, where you'll be brought to a page pertaining to a weather sensor. If you have a wind rain alarm set up with your controller, then you'll be able to view information from that device here, as well as set up automatic closures of your vents. In addition, this button will show the outside temperature on it, uh, if available. Now, if you have option C or H of the Climate Boss controller and have the auxiliary board enabled in your settings, you'll see the extra option of HAF on this top row. This option controls your horizontal airflow fans. Also, you have the options of your two timer modes, a dehumidification vent cycle, and a statistics button, all at the bottom. These options will be covered in separate videos as well as in our manual. Finally, you can press the More button to toggle back to the main menu. This completes the general overview of the Climate Boss controller for natural vent houses, otherwise known as the RWL version. Remember that all of this information is readily available in the manual, which is linked in the description. Remember that if you had any trouble throughout this process, we are always available by phone and email for support. Remember to like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter or Instagram for the latest updates and information. We also have an e-newsletter for other information and tips, and you can see many other tutorials on our YouTube channel for other issues you might have. Thanks!